This is J-Rodman. I'm accidentally fighting myself in Lodge Tale 3. Everyone defended. We're not going to continue. Okay, uh, we're now ready. We've mapped the Wilderness and Scarabray, and we can now... We're now ready to proceed along the quest the old man gave us. He told us, head into the dungeon under the Mad God's Temple, find Brill Hasty Aptarge, I think I remember. Brill Hasty Aptarge. I I don't know if that resembles any language or sorry, nationalities style of names anywhere, but it's uh it's a name it's a fantasy name. How about that? And I just I guess this uh map of Scarabray attentive and add some finishing touches. These are <clears throat> uh, places that adjoin that adjoin the um, places you can walk where um, you know, whatever. They're, they're areas you cannot travel that are near where you can walk. And by filling them in I just give maintenance there's a lamp I think we have lamps and torches I have no idea if they're different at all I think maybe um, I'm running away from that Puma I think maybe um, they last a little longer or maybe illuminate a slightly more area uh, but turning on my mystic shield, I've got light, I've got a shield, I've got, I'm not going to bother with levitation yet. Uh, I'll probably hit some traps, but, um, I'll just suck it up for now. Okay, and my bard is probably in need of some booze. is happening. I couldn't scroll down. Use for down. Okay. And there's another torch that the bard has. Okay. Head in. I'll speak to the priest. We're going to say Tarjan, the name of the mad god. And he sends us down to the catacombs. Uh, I have to insert dungeon disc A. minor warp speed and here we are in the catacombs I'm gonna hit the question mark to see what's here and then I'm actually gonna pause the emulator 
I don't know if this is cheating or what. I just don't want to have my spells run out while I'm doing some overhead. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know what my current save file is, so I'm going to choose to save. Oh, it's Sprite Tale 3 current. This is where I'm doing my ongoing work. Uh, for every time I finish the session, I save off the um, current state to a folder, so if anyone wanted to, they could see where I was at that time. Okay, so Scarab, we're now in the catacombs, we're going to make a new region. The region is will be a called the catacombs. Um, I'm not going to include a ground floor, that seems misleading for the catacombs. It's basements on down. In fact, we're going to, I'm going to just start with the basement. How about that? Um, I'm going to put us down here in the corner because we're down here in the corner. Okay, so the first thing I need to, I want to record is um, that we have some stairs up here. And then I'm going to start putting down walls. Let me zoom in. This is too hard to see. And a little more. Can we see the walls? I guess I, that is some low contrast. I didn't worry about it outside. Um, but it's hard to make out here. Maybe I'm going to adjust the theme. Set up. Blue on white, plain gray. Uh, I'm going to go with a much higher contrast. Look. Okay, there we go. This is, this is what I can see from the initial layout. There's a corridor that goes along, there's a turn, there's a double door. Um, there's, this one has a door here. I think that this is a door in this section, but it's hard to say. Um, the resolution is awfully low. And my memory says, so these dungeons could, it could actually wrap around. So like if, if there was a hole here, you would come back around here. Or if it was a hole here, you would come back around here. I think the manual actually tells you this. But to one, they did not. They just let you figure it out. And it was like probably the first time you played a game of this style. And you just kind of kept mapping off the edge and eventually realized you were mapping the same thing again. I, I feel like that was a, a really magical moment in a way. I had taped many pieces of graph paper um, together to be able to try to make the map cover the space, and then eventually I sort of realized, oh, it's the same. There's there they they have some hints um, if you were less spatially perceptive or whatever, you would figure it out eventually probably. Uh, so this is my provisional map. Uh, obviously, I'm making it from an auto map, which sort of means, what am I doing? Well, um, in a way, I am just giving myself to place a place to take notes later. Because. Um, while in this dungeon it may not be strictly like it, this dungeon may be simple enough that we actually don't need it uh but or i actually don't need it i guess i should say um but uh i we that won't be true later also this auto map is um like when i first tried using the auto map in by tale 3 it was kind of frustrated i was like it's no fun having everything shown to me why why would i want that 
and um, I think later it won't show us everything ahead of time. This is sort of training wheels. Wow, there's a fair amount to this, and I'm not sure I'm recording it all correctly. Uh, I guess I'll find out when I start wandering around in it. Uh, next to this line, there's a wall on the, to the west a bit. There's a closet. There we go. Now it's starting to feel right. This is too tall. There we go. And then this is doors all the way down. There's, I think there's ways to draw rectangles. Maybe some of this would have been faster that way, but I kind of don't want to leave the keyboard for now. I can just use the um, cursor keys to move the kind of cursor box around. <coughs> and um, the shift arrow draws a wall on that side, whereas I'm on a Mac command arrow. I think it's control arrow on Windows um, and Linux too. Draws a door. Okay, so I think this is actually fairly complete from what we get from the auto map. Let's zoom out a bit. Here's our map. Now it's a little silly that the um, the grid here doesn't align, so I'm gonna try to fix that. How big is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13? Really? 13? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, okay. It's 13. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13 by 13. That is not the size I expected. Um, and oh, setup, grid, and they have some prefabricated sizes of which this is not any. So we can say we want a custom size and the size we want is 13 by 13. Um, <coughs> and we want to have the values back on now because um, our origin is in the corner so it can show us nice numbers for us. And I think it will already be what we want. So if we zoom in you can see it's kind of pale. I'm gonna zoom in more. There's a, there's a six, zero, one, two. Let's go for the. I'm, I'm, I guess the only really usable theme here is um, is, well, uh, where's where's the theme controls? Floors, theme, theme and fog. I think this is the original theme is like the only one that's highly usable. Um, so let's go back. No, no, it has the same problem. Whatever. Do I like yellow? I actually kind of like the yellow. Um, but I'm going to go with white for now. Uh, anyway, these numbers are subtle. Um, but... 
um, you they're there, and I don't have to make them myself, at least for now. So here's our overall look of the dungeon, and what I'm going to do is turn back on the avatar controls, and make sure I hit all the spots in this dungeon, because I've already drawn everything, so it's going to be a little less clear. And I can leave the auto map. And cast my magic compass. Oh, we got an immediate note here. Probably those exact words are not going to be needed. They're probably just flavor text, but... My mentality when playing this sort of thing is... Remember, record everything. Okay, we'll turn north. And head through this. It was a door, I wasn't sure. North is a door. East is a door. As expected. East, and I have a fight of th three things, two of one sort, one of another. Um, I don't remember the difficulty of these things, so I'm just going to attack A and B and B, and hide and defend and see what happens. Stalker missed. The Nefast did 25 points of damage. Okay, that was more than I was expecting. And none of them died. Well, the Nefast did the most. I'm going to have everyone attack the Nefast, except for my rogues hiding. And I'll have Stubby hit the Foul Stalkers with a Star Flare. Okay, the fast is down, and one of the foul stalkers is down. Um, it's time for some healing on my bard. Okay, so now you have your first treasure chest of the game. Here we can um, choose to just open it, and whatever bad things might happen, just happen. We can choose to disarm it, but if we try to disarm it, we have to know what kind of trap it is, or I'd probably set it off. There's a trap zap spell, we could use that. We can also just say, screw it, we're going to ignore this chest. I'm going to mostly examine the chest. I'm going to examine it with my character's in order, expecting that only the rogue has really a chance, but just to see what happens. So, warrior found nothing, paladin found nothing, uh, monk found nothing, uh, bard found nothing. Okay, so my rogue discovered it was a poison blades, or at least thinks it is. I haven't really... Poison blades. And I typed I mistyped it. You see I, I left the S off the end. And <laughs> that's sort of like you fucked up disarming the trap. The result is my poor mage got poisoned and I don't have any poison removal spells. So I have to get the hell out of here. That was my first dungeon expedition. Oh wow, 
wow, that looks super ugly with this theme. Okay, I'm gonna have to find another way to solve the other problems. Meanwhile, my poisoned character's health is slowly uh, drifting away, so I guess... killing her, I'm anti-killing her. The reason I <coughs> failed to untrap that chest is because, again, it's the emulated keyboard and it doesn't really like overlapping keys very much. So if I type blades that really naturally the way I would, The e is, my E finger is still down while the S key is going down. Okay, so now we're in the wilderness. I want to rename it. And I can see we're here, and here is the... slight misnavigation. Oh, and I tried to run away from the hobbits and they didn't let me. They are not ne next to me, so I'm going to shoot them with arrows. We don't have any arrows. My monk, or sorry, my rogue managed to sneak up 20 feet in the shadows. I guess it's nighttime. Maybe that's not going to make sense. Those arrows really don't do very much damage compared to the hand-to-hand -hand attacks. Oh, I guess I figured out last time that I only needed a few hundred more experience to level up some of them again. So after I become unpoisoned, I can't run away again. After I become unpoisoned, I should go back and check the trainer. I think your ability to run away is an aggregate of your saving throws across the party, so if you have a bunch of luck, it's easier. There are other abilities that help, so heal, Belladonna. So it cost me 2,400 gold to get unpoisoned. Somewhat irritating. Floppy drive light was definitely part of the experience. You could also kind of hear it a bit. But uh, when I was walking around in the dungeon, or anywhere else really, and the light came on, I knew something was about to happen. There was like that little pause where the light came on, I was like, oh, what's next? 
also it just I don't know I find it nicely confirming if with modern computing sensibilities you you might feel a stall and say like nothing nothing's happening why isn't why isn't anything happening did it crash and when you see the dislike you know no nothing nothing crashed it's just it's just loading okay level up constitution for a warrior dexterity these are good these are good level ups uh, luck for my monk strength for my bard not quite as good luck for the rogue ambivalent and intelligence for uh Tenuvial and intelligence for stubby now who is the conjurer anyway i can't remember Tenuvial is our conjurer so it's conjurer and then magician although that's that's actually going to change but not yet i think they can get new spells now spells cost 4,000 apiece. And the resurrect or the poison cure I just did cost 2,400. So it's a good chunk of my money, almost half. Over half? Over half gone. Um, just slightly over half gone. Just, just like that. So if you start getting people killed off, it gets, uh, it gets kind of problematic because bringing people back from the dead is not hard, but it's much more expensive than fixing other problems. Okay, let's try going down in the dungeon again. I thought someone had a. There we go, there's a torch. Uh, bard spells actually get stronger depending where you are. I don't think that they're stronger in the first dungeon, but the later dungeons. Like, you just go there and they're stronger there. They don't get stronger with the bard, they get stronger with the place. Uh, I don't know what went into that design decision. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about that, but... So here you can see... Reading track 11, well, we, the computer, is reading track 11, and then it goes to track 2 and 3, and then it's done loading. Not that those facts are super interesting, but um, that sort of thing is why I put it there, so you could get a sense of activity. And now I just kicked back down the door to the room I was in before. We have another Nefast. Uh, I'm going to take this one more seriously. I didn't look at my new spells. That was foolish. Um, I don't know if I have any good single target spells. Let's try Arc Fire, because I think it scales with level. And I'm going to do some healing, because I don't want them to be dead. Chantel definitely has the worst armor class. Well, this Nefast was a lot less mean than the last one. Okay, again, examine with the rogue. It looks like Poison Needle. So, disarm the rogue again. Poison Needle. And this is a game element that is probably a mistake. You have a chance of detecting traps. Oh, 
what what did I typo that time? Oh my god. Maybe I'll just use Trap Zap from now on. Uh, for a little while. And you have a different chance that's much lower for disarming traps. That was a monster that tried to join my party, but I was trying to turn right, which is L, and that also pressed L for leave. Um... So, I left without meaning to. Uh, Star Flare on the Slath Beasts, whatever a Slath Beast is. I believe it's some kind of lizard thing. Strangely, the fast masters, I think, are less dangerous than the fasts. I, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know, maybe it's... Oh, and these things poison. I didn't know that. My money is about to... You know, I wonder if I just got Flesh Restore. That would be very convenient. Um, hide and cast Flesh Restore. Yes, I got it. So, this is a... Um, a healing spell that also cures poison. So Chantel is down to 11 hit points. And played the... Um, Armor class song again. So Chantel just backed up to 29 hit points and is no longer poisoned, which is key. Everyone's attacking the fast masters, assuming Stubby will finish off the Slath Beast with a spell. Now I'm going to cast, or I'm going to play the song Bring Around Ballad, which heals me ongoing during combat. Um, Flesh Restore on Belladonna, Star Flare on the Slath Beasts. And the Fast Master is dead, and another is dead. And all the Slath Beasts are dead. The healing is not very impressive. You'll see that our hit points go up at the end of the round. There. But it affects the whole party, and it keeps going. So we're going to keep... You'll see this 84 rise to 86. So if you use um, a healing song, Shockwave... At the beginning of combat, then every round you'll get two hit points back, which is pretty nice. Now, if I was entering the wrong um, trap name or typoing it, I'd set it off. But uh, I'm just not that good at disarming, so I uh, don't set it off, but don't disarm it. That's sort of what's happening. And now I got a shadow shiv. That may not be obvious, but shiv is sort of like, means like something you stab someone with, that kind of a shiv. And I think only rogues can equip them, so you'd probably figure that one out. But what this offers is um, way better hiding ability. Now, 
finally finished exploring the first room. Okay, hopefully the next room will not be quite as um, exciting. I guess it went up in here, and we're loading. A Zephyr Lord and a Nefast Master. Only two enemies. I don't really remember what Zephyr Lords do. Let's watch the the rogue will succeed at hiding in shadows pretty much always from that at this point. And then she hit for 31 from the shadows. Uh, not an instant kill. But a lot more damage than we've seen her done before, do before. Now the Zephyr Lord summoned a wolf. I think that's what they do is they make wolves. Which is um, not the worst thing when there's only one of them. Because they might keep making wolves, and you might keep killing the wolves, and you might just keep collecting experience. Uh, this is distracting. Okay. How am I going to edit that out? Examine the chest. So this time I didn't find anything. That doesn't mean there's no trap. There could be no trap, but I don't feel like I have the hit points to throw away like that. So I'm going to cast a trap zap spell. Wait. And I think I pressed spacebar or something before, but the trap zap spell always disarms and handles the traps, but it costs two spell points. You haven't got infinite spell points. Up above, um, out of the dungeon, in the outside, during the day, you get spell points back. Here, wandering around in the bowels of the earth, you don't get jack. I'm gonna try running away from this fight. It looks like more than I really wanna bite off right now. gave me a warning on that one. So, um, this is a silence zone, and I'm not sure how I want to record that. Uh, I'm going to put it as a blue field. And this said something. There is a, is a strange silence ahead. And what that means is um, your bard songs just turn off when you're in a silent zone. Which um, isn't always a big deal, but sometimes it's maybe it's your last bard song. Um, light in the bard songs, how you can see. So it can matter. Uh, or it could just be that you don't have a bard song when you have that fight, which means your armor class is not as good as it could be. I don't know if the Nefast and the Shadow Drifter, which is a bigger threat, but I'm having everyone attack the Nefast, because I've seen it hit me for 28 damage or so.
And at really low levels, I find that Trap Zap is typically what runs me out of spell points. Well, okay, so at this point where we're like losing, almost losing fights sometimes, using the spell points to not die may be how we run out of spell points. But soon, I think it will be Trap Zap that is the limiter. Oh, there was a trap there. Okay, so how to indicate a trap? Um, I think that should be some kind of marker. There's a pit trap marker, which is here. Uh, maybe that's good enough for our purposes. Stubby, I'm gonna start heading to the door. These demon gar well it says demon gar here and it says demon gar there. But anyway, uh they don't seem to be very good at hitting us, which is nice. Drop something good. Drop something good. Crazy cloud. I did not think a crazy cloud would um, happen on this level. I set off a crazy cloud. I was sure I typed it correctly. Anyway, that makes you insane. And when you're insane, you... Uh, attack your friends. So it's definitely time to leave. You attack randomly, actually, which is often your friends. It's time to leave the dungeon. I thought the first level would all be Poison Needle and Blades. In fact, in some of the earlier games, on the really early dungeons, there's so few choices and traps that you can just not even examine. You can just assume you know what it is. What time is it out here in fantasy game world? So we're at least regaining rating hit points. In fact, I should play the... I don't... That was the Sir Robin's tune. I meant to do the um, wrap up to a time. And the rhyme of do a time, among other things, causes spell points to come back twice as fast. But not uh, when when they wouldn't come back otherwise. It doesn't help you. So if you're in a dungeon, um, the rhyme of two time doesn't give you spell points. It's just when you're out in the sun, they, they come back twice as fast. That's all. I guess the mages practice some sort of photosynthesism. I don't know. My next level, uh, my next experience point level to go up, <laughs> I think was 10,000 after the one I, I got recently. So even though I'm getting like 300, 400 uh, experience points per battle, I don't think we're there yet. Oh, can you just leave me alone? Oh, you know what? I should use the Robin's tune. <laughs> 
I don't know, I guess I want both. So if I use Robin's tune, you can always run away. Running always works when that song is playing. Uh, I guess rogues do get multiple attacks. Oh no, it's because Rhyme of Duo Time is playing. Anyway, my rogue got multiple attacks on my own party member. Because she's insane. One way to cure insanity is to kill someone. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's a thing. Uh, of course, then you have to bring them back to life. And that's more expensive than curing insanity. Actually, um, let me look up the... So, here I am looking at the list of spells and realizing that Flesh Restore cures insanity. So I didn't need to do that. Oh well. Oh well. So, so it goes. Anyway, so, um, for editing difficulties, uh, I'm going to stop here and say well, that was the um, foolish end to my first foray into, uh, into the Mad God's temple. <laughs>